I'm also looking forward to meeting Paul Weller though. <laughs> like, yes, please. <laughs> Ryan's been growing his hair just know, to look just, just like him. <laughs> just for Paul. <laughs> You Any ideas? Are you going to be planning what you're going to say? Are you going to plan what you're going to say? You're just going to walk up and go, oh God. <laughs> I'm going to freestyle it, but I know it'll go wrong. Yeah, so. it's like, all right, Paul, Paul, <laughs> you got a lighter. I'm Jen Thomas from Enemy, and for the latest in our In Conversation series today, I'm joined by Alex and Ryan from the Lovens. Now, 2020 was a massive year for you. Obviously, you were in the BBC Sounds long list. You've been working on a debut album. You had your Blackpool Tower show. How was it knowing that it wasn't quite the traditional year you would have liked with the pandemic? How has that been? Um, I think no matter what, it wouldn't really be a, a traditional year for us. Like, it's, it's been crazy, like, just this year in general. Like, I feel like we've kind of escaped it in like a, a mad way because we've we've still been able to do our jobs and kind of like still live um, like happily. Um, so it's it's been really good. Like every like, I always had like loads of support from fans and everything. So we've not really had like many things to worry about, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I think you had the year in general has just been like mad still. Like it should have been a lot crazier, but the stuff we've managed to do during this, well, in this situation. During a pandemic, yeah. like, we've still, still managed like, to, like... An unbelievable year for all of us, like, crazy. It makes it even more impressive that it's happened during a pandemic, as you say, for most fans, working on a debut album is exciting as it is, but I should imagine it adds on an extra layer of it being a bit more complicated with the pandemic. How was it, and can you give us any clues of what we can expect from the album? Um, I think everybody, I think everybody's going to be very like happily surprised yeah. with what comes out. Um, I think we was kind of a bit shocked with how, <laughs> how things have turned out. Yeah. Um, not like not none of the tracks sound the same, and they've all got their own stories to tell. And it's like being a songwriter, like I, I saw them just in my room, kind of just as little like ideas and like structures and that, and then actually hearing them come to life with the lads playing like like together and everything and it's like James Skelly and then Chris Taylor they're doing all their magic it's it's um it brings them to life don't it and yeah I think everyone, I think everyone's gonna buzz off and I hope so anyway fingers crossed that's always the nerve-wracking bit isn't it you've worked on it it's your baby and it's like please be nice please like what we've spent all this year working on yeah I feel confident though, like, yeah. everybody's always lovely and uh, lots of support and that so it's been a bit of a best lesson in disguise really the pandemics because we've been able to get the album like boxed off and finished so now we've got all this time all the rest of this year to focus on like live music and getting yeah. ourselves back out there and working with James Skelly and obviously Tim Burgess had a hand in promoting you first of all how has that been for you because obviously these are some iconic names and, and ones that many of us have grown up with it must be quite surreal yeah it was like um uh, first like proper proper gig that when Tim Burgess yeah. called uh, at Kendall Carlin it was the first festival, our first like festival, first gig I've ever been to, to be honest. And it was like, I think it set us up for what was to come, like, yeah. without us knowing. Um, it's going to be a wild ride and that, but it's, it's going to be really fun. It's, it's weird to see these people and speak to them as people not being like, can I have a picture? You know? Yeah, <laughs> just like, do you want a brew? Do you yeah. want a sandwich? <laughs> so it's a bit weird. But yeah, it's... it's uh, Amazing. It's, a, it's an opportunity I would never did, thought of. Did you get a selfie with him as well, though? Well, we're still a bit scared to ask Jay Skelly for a selfie. Yeah, but we're, we're not really selfie people, no, are we? We're a bit... Not very photogenic. <laughs> no. <laughs> so doing that, I mean, you did that first show, as you say. It was a huge, big festival set. You did it at the diner. Uh, you also did some shows at a hen party, didn't you? And, like, someone's nan's birthday. I mean, are there any particular shows that stand out for you as, as highlights? I mean, you did the Black Bull Tower as well, obviously, but you yeah. seem to favour the unusual venues. Uh, that hen do, that was crazy. That was literally the first ever gig as the Lathams. We got that name on the way to that gig. Um, but as far as, like, crazy places we've played, the Blackpool Tower has got to be a highlight. And it's like an iconic place, yeah. like, it? like, especially, like, from the north and everything, like, not, not to, not to categorise it. <laughs> but Brixton Academy as well with Jerry, that was, like, that was surreal. 
first time we played London and we played yeah. Brixton Academy. It's like, it was packed that yeah. night, that night, that first night as well. Yeah. I always say it, and I, I know I'll, I'll get penalised this again, but King Tuts, I have to say yeah. it, every, every time someone asks, King Tuts was amazing. But like I say, like, no matter where we go, like it could be like so far down south or right up in the north, it's like people still love the music and love us and that, and everybody always gives us like a, a really good time. A warm welcome as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because Hindus can be quite wild, so I should imagine that was definitely a baptism of fire, having to play there. <laughs> Yeah. If only it was a bit older. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so you did that Blackpool Tower show. Uh, I know that you had some special guests appearing there with uh, like clowns and things taking part as well. How did that come about? Whose idea was it? It was been a thing for a while. We've always said we want to play the Blackpool Tower. Yeah. Since like, well, we Rob, I love how the clowns yeah. just in it. It's like. Um, I don't know. It, it's, Bit of history from yeah, where we are yeah. into into what we're doing as well as just being in the Blackfield Tower. Yeah, we really learnt is. a lot as well. We spoke to like uh, the family that that own it and run it, and it's like was it like eleven generations yeah, family like and that. that? It's like gone through all, like, all of the uh, all the generations, and their family was start like literally started you know when like circuses and everything started like. Um, they were I think there was like travellers at the time, uh, just like people just in caravans and that reaching about um like doing acrobatics and stuff and that's how it kind of i think that's how he he kind of uh, told me um and it was just really interesting like learning their stories and stuff and, and like seeing how they've seen the change in it through yeah. all the years from it's like beginning to like it now um so it was really good like kind of like a history lesson which yeah. i'm all for and obviously you are going to be hopefully doing some live shows this year. Fingers crossed that it's all going to happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. would you like to go and play there again with like a full crowd oh, there? Amazing. Definitely. In that circle at the bottom, like just thinking about if a crowd was there was just like... We want to we wanna be, we wanna be spinning round as well yeah. while the crowd's <laughs> there. Like, look at everybody <laughs> like spinning round. <laughs> And you did some socially distant shows as well. I know you played in Liverpool. How was that when you haven't really had a chance to play most of last year? How was it? I have to say, I think that like, kind of, in a weird way, it didn't make up for all the lost time. But like, if, if one way was going to make yeah. up for it, that was it. Like, especially playing two gigs, it was kind of like, we came off stage and there was like adrenaline and everything was buzzing. But like, we knew we had another gig as well. So it was like, we could still keep ourselves up. Do you know what I mean? You still had something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. Like, all the crowd and like, everybody, like, because of the weird time and that, and like, the situation, everybody was kind of like reasonable about it. So yeah. we, all, we, all, we all had a really good time. I think for a lot of people, like myself included, because it's part of your job, isn't it? You go to shows and things all the time. And I think a lot of us did take it for granted that we have so many gigs, so many festivals in the UK. And I do think that maybe we will all appreciate it a bit more uh, going forward. So I think you can guarantee that your tour dates next year are going to be carnage uh, when they actually happen. Oh. Everyone's just going to be loving it. Yeah, yeah I hope so. Towards the end of last year, we were like, oh, not another gig. <laughs> and now we're like, give us a gig. <laughs> Please let us play. We just want to play anywhere. I don't care where. We will do it. And you released your EP, uh, which obviously did really well. Everybody was loving the songs. One of my favourites on it is I See Your Ghost. Obviously, you have the incredibly fast singing throughout that. Have you ever had a moment where you think, why did I do that? Why did I do it so quickly? Like, Is it going to be difficult to keep up on tour? No, no. Stuff like, weirdly enough, stuff like that I find easier because it's all um, like muscle memory. Uh, habit almost but I, I usually think about you know uh, like we're crying out and stuff like that you know the big long notes yeah <laughs> after a couple of gigs after that it's um starts being a bit bottom clenching <laughs> <laughs> you just put the mic out and let the fans do it instead that's a very good idea <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you thank you for that. <laughs> a few, um, few of us there. definitely yeah. seen some festival sets where they've like just given it to the crowd to do when they can't be bothered so that's the sort of way <laughs> So you do it, you sing, it'll be fine. I'll do a trick now. And what has it been like? Obviously, you signed to the major label this year. What has it allowed you to do differently? Pretty much everything you've seen this year. Yeah, yeah. It's given us the opportunity to like actually do everything we've had in our heads yeah. for the, the the short amount of time we've actually been a band. The ideas we've had and the, the stuff we've wanted to do is this year's finally like 
we've been able to do it. Testament to it in yeah. HK Artist Especially the album, like, that's like, it's a pinnacle of your musical career, your, your debut album in it. So to, to do that is like, get that out and get it recorded. Just still can't afford new glasses though. <laughs> <laughs> All these amazing things, sell it tours and that. I've still got broken glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Walking room, we like for like half glasses. <laughs> Well, you can make it part of your thing. That's going to end up being part of your look now. That, like, five years down the line, you're still going to be like putting tape and stuff on and going, No, that is how it was when our debut album came out. I've got to stick to it. Yeah, unfortunately, it's winter, so we didn't have any ice lollies. So I was going to make like a makeshift down, <laughs> but not got any. So, Spotify, I know everyone did that Spotify unwrapped at the end of the year. It takes over everyone's social media. Was it you had more than seven million streams in 92 countries? How does that feel? Ish. Unbelievable. It, because it's like through like the the medium of like 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 through the phones and everything. Actually trying to think about it is kind of like a bit overwhelming. Do you know what I mean? Like thinking about all those people, um, like all over the world and like it's, it's it, it makes like it makes me makes me feel good. Well, trying to actually like um, comprehend it. Yeah, comprehending like quantify it. It's a bit surreal. You must definitely be pinching yourselves in a way because you say it started off as what college project and now you look yeah. at everything you're doing, the people that you're working with. How did you ever picture this panning out or is it all come as a complete surprise? It was always a hope and a dream. I think it was never like uh, this is going to happen. It was always like, what if? Yeah. I feel like everybody in life if you stay in a band and stuff, you, you want it to happen. Like mm -hmm. deep down, you always want it to happen. Me personally, I remember being like quite young and like I never thought it would happen like this, but I always knew I'd like try and really make it and like proper go for it. Um, so in some ways, I was kind of prepared for it. But like I. Uh, like I'm not trying to downplay it or anything like it's absolutely mental yeah. what's going on yeah. you've got a lot of the vintage influences I know is that you recorded one of the videos on it like the Super 8 camera um you've got some of the vintage influences to your sound where has that come from I mean was it were you surrounded by that sort of music growing up have you always had a love of it and me personally I've always loved um like not just music like fashion like the time like just how they spoke and everything. Like I've always liked it old fashioned, um, like vintage, like 40s, 50s, 60s, that kind of era. Um, moving on to the 70s now, I'm getting a bit more Chester and that. <laughs> but, um, I think we're all stuck in the past a bit. None of us listen yeah. to new music. We're yeah. all like 90s, 80s, well, yeah. just the 1900s really, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you ever wish that you were in a band in the 90s? Well, I, we I we used to, but yeah. we had a conversation like, and I were like, that we're the band of the twenties. Do you know what I mean? Like they're all in twenties, so <laughs> I, I like that. So. Cassette tapes and everything are coming back now. So I think was that, um, there was a there was a piece done the other day saying about how many have been selling, and loads of bands and up and coming artists are going back to cassette tapes, yeah. which I found really interesting because yeah. I used to have them. I was born in the eighties. But then you think, has anyone actually got anything to play them on now? Yeah. So we're all buying them. Are you just yeah. looking at them? <laughs> well, there's a business idea. Yeah. <laughs> Bring back the Walkmans. Yeah. So we'll be like walking around as if it's like the 90s again. It'll be fine. Just yeah. revert. Everything's always come back around, though. Don't yeah. like fashion and that. Everything always comes back around. There's only so many things you can do. If it's good, it'll stick. It's like, so. mu it's like music, in it. There's been like a big drought and that, but no. Um, guitar, guitar music's coming back in yeah, and it's back on the Because so. that's thing Kasabian said a couple of years ago that they wanted to save guitar music and there was a time where it did seem like it wasn't as, as popular, it wasn't really appearing as much, the different genres took over. Yeah. Do you think that bands like yourselves have proved that people are still wanting it and that it is coming back round again? Well, we're like living proof of it. Like people are like, like crying out for something to like feel a part of and like actual music that you can feel that like people know that we actually care about this and like yeah. what we're writing about and how we perform it and when we're on stage and like we're feeling it like we're not just doing it because we want to be in a band and we want to get famous and all that I think people are really connecting to that um so yeah like like I say we're we're living proof that the guitar bands will be put down 
we'll still be here in 20, 30 years. Even if we're underground, if we're underground band, we'll still be going. We'll be kicking about. Yeah. <laughs> still going. You have your loyal fans that are turning up. Because I've seen on your Twitter that like, some people have gone and got tattoos of your lyrics. I mean, I'm covered, but I don't actually have any band or lyric ones. How does that feel for you that someone is like committed to I, getting that in their skin? Yeah, that is mental. Like, I've got a few band tattoos. I've got a Nirvana one on my chest and the words Zeppelin one. Um, but to think that someone's got our band tattooed on is just ridiculous. Like, yeah. I mean, if I ever met Dave Grohl and showed him that tattoo on my chest, I'm sure he'd be like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. close to me, you know what I mean? But it, it's just crazy. It's a nice guy, dude. Yeah, nice guy in rock and roll. Makes you rethink some of your lyrics if you think people are going to get it put on them permanently. Yeah, it's just mental. Like, like I was just writing in my notepad, like, just because it made me feel better and now people have got it on their actual skin, like, forever. And so you've worked with James Skelly, you had the interactions with Tim Burgess, you've had support from Miles Kane as well. What other artists would you like to work with? Who's on your bucket list of collaborations? Again, anyone you throw at us. I mean, we <laughs> feel like we've got our own, we've got our, we've got our own um, journey to create first. I feel like we've got our own kind of like ethos to set before we start kind of mixing me like I, don't get me wrong in the future it'd be nice to kind of come together with another person with another like philosophy and another ideal and kind of like make it bigger than what it what it is now but at the moment I think we've got our own our own path to to kind of craft you Club raised for Scott, it's Johnny Ma what was that sorry but for Scott it's just Johnny Ma or yeah. Sean Paul <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sean Paul Sean Paul, Pitbull, Jason Derulo could end up on TikTok. That could be your next thing. Exactly. If Mr. Worldwide, and that's where Jason's going with it. Just start shouting your own name at the start of the songs. Like DJ. <laughs> <laughs> <Be interesting. laughs> <laughs> and now uh, you raised £4,000 for Wigan Athletic Football Club. How did that come about? Um, that was Rob. Another, another brilliant idea from Rob Allen, <laughs> the genius that he is. He, um, because he, he, he understands like the heritage of Wigan uh, and like the athletic and how it's been struggling and everything. Um, and then he like Scott actually made the link between Northern Soul and Wigan. It was like we're really rooty in Wigan, Northern Soul. Um, and the Snake's always like a really like a classic. Everybody knows that it's like the, the end, like the end of the night song um, that everyone like walks off to, in, in the night together, holding hands. Uh, where the where there's cake as well, cake. So you made the link, and it kind of it just fit like the both both ideas like fit together, and um, I think it's, it's been like really good, like really it's like a proud feeling that yeah. we can like we've done something for our town, yeah, for our own town, and, like our own like, like football club. I know we're not avid footballers, but like we um, we still love the community and like like where we grew up. Um, so that we can make a, like, a difference in that, make an actual impact, not just put like a post up on Twitter yeah. or something, like, like I'll do something proper. So yeah. It's really good. We're a band of the people. <laughs> and next, well, I keep saying next year, we're in this year, we're in 2021. It's like yeah, when you write right. it wrong. <laughs> we're already now. This year, uh, you're going to be touring with Blossoms again. What else are you looking forward to for this year in 2021? Our tour. Uh, Adam's tour. Yeah, yeah, taking over the world, get, getting back on the road and that, like what we're supposed to be doing. Back in the bus, where we belong. Yeah. <laughs> um, Coming back in a bigger way this time. Yeah. We've, uh, we've, had, we've had a year to hone ourselves and mm -hmm. prepare and think about things, ponder, so. I'm also looking forward to meeting Paul well, though. <laughs> <I'm unbelievable. laughs> Like, yes, please. <laughs> Ryan's been growing his hair just, to know, look, just, just for like Paul. <laughs> just for Paul. <laughs> if you Any ideas? It, are you going to be planning what you're going to say? Are you going to plan what you're going to say? You're just going to walk up and go, oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to freestyle it, but I know it'll go wrong. Yeah, so. it's like, all right, Paul, Paul, <laughs> you got a lighter. What? <laughs> And so we're doing all of these tours and everything coming up. So you say like getting back in the bus, getting back in the van. For many bands, it's not as glamorous as people predict. Uh, but I should imagine you're like, just bring it on. Give us yeah. all of that, please. Yeah. It's it, it's where we belong. We that Last year, not last year, the year before, the time we spent on that bus was like, I don't know, looking back was probably the best time. Yeah, it actually was. Like, it was like so good just being in the van with everybody and just mooching about. 
Yeah, yeah I definitely took it for granted. Massively. Yeah. It's like the the bonding that happens in the van is un, like, it will not happen anywhere else in the world. No, no. The Even thing, when we came back, it's like, we're all like kind of gelled a bit more, yeah. haven't we? Like, we're, we're all like different people yeah. um, in like a good way. But we've just been so lucky in the fact that we can do that. We've been like given the opportunity and we, we've got the like, ability to do it again this year yeah. well all things being well uh, there's a lot of people out there that have had like a really bad time on that um so we want to like make the most of it you know like get get as much out of it as possible because we don't want to don't want to squander it and take advantage and like take it for granted because it we've been blessed here really um to have this opportunity because like you say the reality for it for a lot of other people it's not glamorous at all and for anyone watching this, if they haven't really listened to any of your music before, kind of where should they start? What do you think is the song that they should go and listen to right now once they've finished watching this? The one, the one that's like, I think the title has to stand out to you, but I feel like give all of them a listen through and li like whichever one makes you feel the most. Like it doesn't matter, doesn't matter what emotion it is, as long as it gives you some kind of emotion, it gives you a little tingle or something. That, that's the one. <laughs> I, I want I want people to let me know if, if they get a tingle. Next if they get a tingle, then that's the one for them and you'll know. <laughs> Good way to start 2021, listen to music that makes you tingly. Yeah, so. yeah, best way. Best way. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you for speaking to us. Pleasure.